Good evening and welcome to the Obelisk. Tonight's guest, special guest is Solaris Blue Raven. She's a published author, public speaker, remote viewer, clairvoyant, mystical scientist, investigator, and systems buster for MKUltra-related projects and covert technology. Ms. Blue Raven is an expert, ex, has an expertise in martial arts surveillance and is president and CEO of Raven Star Films and Night Shadow Anomaly Detectives, I think. For more information, check out her, her website and her podcast. She's got a podcast called Raven Star's Witching Hour. She does a monthly thing with Nish and Montana Jordan. What's that called, Nish? Cyber Witch Cafe. The Witch Cafe. So tonight we're doing... Cyber. It's... Wait. Uh, Solar's is Cyber Witch Cafe, right? Yes. The Cyber Witch Cafe. Tonight's the <laughs> lockdown edition of Witches in Lockdown. <laughs> anyway, Solaris, welcome to the show. Greetings, <laughs> listeners. Kind of ad lib in here because that's how we fucking roll. And this is the obelisk. This is where we're just, we're naked, all yeah. of us. And our, our original guest bailed on us like this morning, so we had to scramble. Like, we had to scramble only because I didn't check messages. The so. show got thrown together in 20 minutes. And we're fortunate because Solaris is our friend Indeed. and uh, a sister of mine. So she said, yes, this is not like a normal Solaris last, you called Solaris of last okay. minute. <laughs> This is this is definitely a friend thing. But Solaris, tell us about the new book you have out right now. And before the lockdown, you were out there in the crazy lands being all wild and open to this virus at a con, at a conference. Uh, give, catch us up from the bio that Jerry started. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me both, uh, Nish mm -hmm. and Jerry. Thank you so much. And yeah, the book itself is Alien Intelligence Stepping Up to the Galactic Neighborhood. It's available on Amazon.com and Kindle. It was launched in February live. And I was out in California at UFOCon doing a presentation on alien intelligence and also on artificial intelligence, which was well received. And if you want to catch that, you can actually watch the presentation itself on UFOCon San Francisco 2020. I think if you, it's like $22 to watch all the presenters. And I'm listed in there, so it's well worth a look. But the book itself is about our cosmic ancestry or um, the alien intelligence within, so to speak. It's it's that which we have in our bloodline, in our consciousness, in our DNA, and that that activation that really is our future and also who we really are as, um, as a, a different species from what normal people here in the illusion of think we are. I think it couldn't be timed more perfectly too with the amount of people that are now looking at these narratives in a different way and what's coming forth as what was once crazy, let's say like last year to a lot of people is now not. And so moving forward, this kind of information that you've been talking about for a very long time and have all these books and you, your radio shows is starting to find a new audience, don't you think? Yeah, I had to get my own mute there. Yes, I do. And, and actually what's really interesting is this particular book in general seems to be overlaying some of the things that are happening here on the timeline. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, quite honestly, but it just seemed that as soon as I start cueing people that were in the false, excuse me, the false space-time configuration and that we're literally moving to another, another level and also moving on to our um, cosmic heritage, all this stuff starts happening where it's literally cycling people into a false narrative and false indoctrination program. They're being inverted on a timeline that's literally inertia-driven and also propaganda-driven in psychological operations. So, yeah, it's really strange how this, this is timing and the illusion, you know, it's, it's just very, very odd. But at the same time, this really gives me a confirmation as far as what we really are. And also not to uh, get sucked into this, not get to suck, sucked into this program. We've got to get away from it, however we so choose. Isn't it true to some degree that this reality is built from the energetic down? Yeah, you know, we define it by states of consciousness. There's no doubt about that. Right. But so, at the same time, if you've got the mass collective all driven by fear and propaganda and a false reality and a false narrative, right now they certainly are. It's, it's creating more density for certain. And it's entrapping them into this false collective and this false hive of information where it's going to be harder for them to navigate in multidimensional fields. What I'm also looking at on the timeline is the weaponization of our biodome, which I've touched on and give presentations on. I gave presentations on this uh, a couple of years back but it's literally connected to what's been going on with black satellite technology, 
the uh, types of tagging systems that, that are available and accessible to indoctrinate a target of interest for whether it's for scanning like where I've been with covert warfare, but also just to uh, just to check your bioelectric field, to check your vitals. I mean, all these things that they're capable of doing is now uh, right there in, in hidden in plain sight, but literally transparent right now. And has neato propaganda names like contact tracing. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> And all this stuff, I'm telling you, I'm calling it all out. I'm calling everything out right now, especially after where I've been. I have zero tolerance for this type of indoctrination programming. So I would encourage people to pay attention and uh, really, really look at this whole charade with, with very big eyes and pay attention to the scenery because man, oh man, is it a game. So I was just getting back to the energetic thing and you were t what you said kind of triggered something a memory of mine was the, uh, I forgot how you put it, basically ascension, but not ascension. Like there's mm -hmm. a conscious ascension. Correct. And I've heard another person talk about how we are basically doing that same thing, but it's more we're moving into uh, what she calls, a, for lack of a better term, a fifth dimension or the fifth dimension, but we have to go through the fourth, first, whatever d density. I don't, I don't really understand. I mean, I understand the concept. I don't know what she thinks mm -hmm. it is versus... I'm well, you know, there's a lot of new age ascension stuff going on right now where, oh, we haven't gotten to the fifth dimension and yeah, we are multidimensional. I always tell people that these are the amateurs and these are the ones that are running with regurgitated information, if you ask me. I was teaching ascension work and doing some hardcore, hardcore mystery school initiations and healing work way, way back before all this stuff became very popular in a mm -hmm. topic. But ascension in general is really about changing your bioelectric field, your molecular structure, the DNA, every aspect of your being gets literally resurrected onto another multidimensional field of energy. So you're taking your body with you through light body to Merkaba, opening up dimensional fields, which activate like stargates, for example. So you're literally calibrating to another dimension, which enables you to go into multidimensional fields of energy and traveling and, and living in other worlds simultaneously. And eventually you can step into those other worlds and live there permanently and take mm. your body with you. That's really what Ascension is about. I totally get that. I was I was tiptoeing around because I didn't want to make it sound like I was talking about going to 5D Earth, and I'm doing the air quotes right now. That's no, you're not, good, but I hear that all the time. You know, everybody's talking about the 5D. I'm like, what? Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I totally so, get that it's BS New Age crap. So that's why yeah. I was trying to convey that other person's ideas. It was Randy Green, by the way. I don't uh, know if you follow her. I don't um, know. No, but I'll tell you right now, I, I kind of look sideways at those people because they're kind of making it bad for everybody else because they don't have the real data. Okay. So. Well, she's not talking about 5D Earth or anything. She's talking about actual, like what you said, but she just mm -hmm. used different okay. language. She's right on page with you. Oh, great. Excellent. Yeah. I think you'd like her. I don't know. I'll send you a link. Anyway, that's that was my question. Okay. It's correlation. That's confirmation. Not confirmation. But correlation is always good. Corroboration. Whatever. I'll shut up. Oh, no, no, there's a lot. And Jerry. Skeleton. I want a t-shirt like that, Jerry. Where can I get one? No, Jerry. Free the skeleton. I need that. <laughs> um, I got it on tfury.com. Cool. I want one. Getting one. There's a lot of uh, co-opting. It's Jerry and you're both mentioning of by the new age community. And uh, it, it makes it makes the water really murky and it can put you off. Or it can put one off. Let me put it that way. It can put one off when trying to navigate some of this terminology. And so I like I like where you come from. You're as precise, Solaris. And also, I like your no bullshit attitude with everything. This mm -hmm. is anyone that sees you on Twitter. No, anyone that listens to you knows, but you are especially just, you know, on fire on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, waiting for that specific day where I get banned. I remember <laughs> I last week, next last week or the week before, I was like, every minute there was a new tweet from you. Every I was five. on fire. No, Nisha's yeah. right, man. I have been like so so on when it comes down to having to address things yeah thank you for your support it's it tickles me i just get tickled I, I, so many people i love are just out there going on and you're one of them uh miss purple petunia out there hello girl um so so with all this though where do you see 
where do you see this going right now? Because everything, it's like this big MK Ultra experiment right now on the world, you know, on this huge scale. And, and there's craziness. Like, I, I know that everyone's seen the Joe Biden videos lately, that clips, and the, the one that went around today with the intercourse comment. Oh, yeah, neurolinguistics. I mean, girl, this is like the, he has lost he had he is he's senile i mean seriously it's almost like he's been lobotomized and you know he did have the brain surgery so i give him some credit in a sense that i understand he has an injury in his brain and for whatever reason he is determined to try to run or at least do something or stand up and i have to tell you after i've been after where i've been with these covert projects especially synthetic telepathy and the types of interface i've had with this artificial intelligence i'm not certain that he hasn't been tampered with or been involved in that technology to some degree, and it might have caused him some brain damage down the road, or he might have had some kind of erasure done. And this goes for Clinton, too. I mean, I don't discount any of those things because I understand these technologies and the types of technology that can change brainwave function, also neurolinguistics, where they can literally rewrite a sentence while you're trying to talk. I mean, all these things are correlated into the technology. So that, to me, sticks out. Not that he's, I, I mean, I can't say he is or he isn't, but my intuition is telling me that he's been tampered with to some degree. So there you go. Could he be and, a clone? You know, it, it is weird. It's psychological operations on steroids. And people must understand this. And a lot of people who are already socially engineered are walking right into it. No problems. They're not asking questions. It's like Jim Jones. You know, they're just kind of just going with the flow. And they're not going to get it until they're encapsulated into the room to be guessed. And that's the most unfortunate part. We're losing our country, our freedom, our rights, our constitutional rights. And people have to stand up immediately and, and just get just get yourself reset and centered to to counter these things. What Jerry asked, I find uh, to be yeah. significant too. Do you think it's possible with the cloning technology that he could be one? I think that it can be highly possible that you can be interfaced with another identity. And they do have cloning templates where you can synthetically be interconnected with a technology and a template to overlay onto your brain with activity with another personality, whether that's yours or an aspect of you in another multidimensional space. If it's more government oriented or technological oriented, then it will be somebody else's brain wave activity overlaid onto your being. But definitely not a physical one. Correct, it's yeah. synthetic, but it integrates. No, no, no. It has I mean, the capability like, to integrate depending on how your energetic meshes with it. I totally get that. I was just squashing these this talk of him being a clone and his real body's either dead or in Gitmo or some bogus narrative. Well, I think that's what people mean when they say clones, like they've had a personality shift. Yeah. Like what happened? They look different. Yeah, you can look different when you're a walk-in too. You can look different when you have soul dissension, soul extensions, when you're channeling. I'm sure both of you know this, especially you, Niche. You can bring in other aspects of different energies, entities, uh, deity, whatever it is that may may change your appearance. But the technology I'm talking about literally can do that also. And with that comes synthetic programming insofar as the way the template functions with other personalities of people. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things here too, that I've been noticing with these recent, anytime he's out and talking like the the video that's going around today it does feel like he's you know the handlers are all around him and he's basically being propped up and and it has been my thought that there's been something overlaid like there's an overlay happening mm -hmm. uh it it just seems like he's malfunctioning correct well if you look at these guys like i said if they've been any if they have been involved with any of this technology whether it's conscious or subconscious and they didn't know, they still, in my opinion, have a residue so far as their behavioral patterns go. And the fact that he's had the brain issues, that's a real red flag. You know, tumors in general, or any type of an aneurysm or, or embolism or anything like that, all that technological uh, warfare programs associated can, can create those things, whether, whether people like to hear that or not, it's the truth of it. That's a remote assassination takedown. So those things are possible. And then you have a Humpty Dumpty wandering around. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> there are several presidents that actually come to mind. President uh, Reagan, I believe, had a from what I understand, I believe he was interconnected, but not with the hardcore technology, but I believe he was one of the first presidents to have some uh, technology embedded in him, if I'm not mistaken. Ronnie so that's something to look at as well. And if you remember later on, he got kind of, you know, they said he had a bunch of other things going on, but I, I don't know. I really, I, I think that there's a technology that can cure a lot of disabilities, what people see as disabilities with a, with a type of signal. And the fact that these people are losing memory, you know, if you lose your memory, first of all, if you're getting hit with uh, synthetic telepathy like the way I was, you can lose your memory uh, for short-term memory can be lost easily because they're constantly jamming your transmission. 
So that can happen quite often if you get hit with it hard enough and for long for long term. So just to give you an example of the types of technologies that they have available and what they can do to the brain. But he can still remember how those kids, you know, stroke the hair on his legs. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's also a program more than likely. But also think about his childhood. Most, most people remember their childhoods. And I have to tell you, when you're involved in real uh, covert technology, if you're, a, if you're an off-worlder, if you're a star seed, usually you don't remember your childhood. They try to make sure you have one mm. as, a, as a cover, as a program. Yeah, I, I, I would There's imagine it's programmed. I love that? how Westworld, the series, brings that in, how it's yeah, all just it's planted. It's children, mm-hmm. really, if, if you're doing things right in consciousness, you really don't have a lot of memories of childhood. It's people that bring them up to you. They're trying to control it. What do you see? I've been wondering your take on this, Solaris, and I, I don't know why I haven't asked you, and I'm sure you have, you probably have mentioned it, but you know, like you've been on fire, so I don't catch everything. But what are your thoughts with this whole sky net thing of Elon Musk the, that's going up? What, what do you think about all that? Oh, well, I don't think it's free energy insofar as free Wi-Fi or whatever it is he's trying to create insofar as that goes. I do know that there's a backdoor access, which means that it's for surveilling, surveillance and probably some of the profiling or types of uh, tracking that I'm familiar with, which is triangulating a target from remote and, and indoctrinating a target into a program. This can also be for brainwave entrainment or re-education purposes through rearranging their brainwave activity, literally programming them from a, diff- from a distance. So I don't discount any of that coming in. And now to what degree he's able to pull it off is another scenario, but I think that he has capabilities that, that are not being addressed. And no, they're not pretty streams and streams of lights in the sky. You know, people are looking like a string of pearls and I don't see that at all. I don't hate this guy, but I tell you, he has so much duality in him. You've got to really watch him. He's very controlled. Yeah, I agree. I was wondering, Jerry, what do you think about all that too? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> the, this Elon Musk stuff that oh, we were just talking about. He's not human. <laughs> he's some kind of otherworldly being. <laughs> well, he wants to be into transhumanism. I, I think, intuitively speaking, he's probably been interconnected with some technology similar to where I've been, but not as good. And that's given him a taste of that euphoric high with technological transhumanism and interface, which has turned him on to such a degree that I think this is where he's heading. And, and the, th- the sad thing about those programs is that they're not really a god or creator or spirit. They're just a diversion. It's like a drug. You get interconnected with technology, and it's just like a drug, just like anything else. You, you get this euphoric high. You go into a different world. It's technological. You interface, and it seems really cool. And then they weaponize, and it becomes a monster, and it becomes fragmenting and very, very strange. Well, I met Elon about 20 years ago, and he was pretty odd then. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. But, you know, Jerry, in specific, I was mentioning the stuff with his his solar net or whatever it's Starlink, called. Starlink? Starlink. And so... Well, and I'm not a big believer in satellites, so... I know, I know that. But nonetheless, people are saying they're seeing stuff. And one... So both yes. of you, I'm wondering There's if... There's lots of sightings of the Starlink stuff, but no is one... Is there something being... Is that a cover for other stuff going on because there's a lot of other stuff going on in the sky right now and everything's getting bling, blamed on that. Well, it's Starnet or whatever. It's convenient, isn't it? Of yeah, course, it's always convenient. It's Starlink. And you know, I have a Starlink in my car. You know, that's the different kind of Starlink. Oh, yeah. in an emergency, you can push a button and they can come. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, they know where I am. There's that kind of thing that's just, that can be helpful in a situation, in a critical situation. Then there's the other stuff that's more nefarious insofar as spying on people illegally and interconnecting them with a the technology or a signal to affect their brainwave activity and and, hi- and actually you can you can brain hack people remotely and get into the dream time as well. So all of these things are capabilities depending on to what degree they decide to use them. I will tell you all one thing that I've noticed since this shutdown has happened. Through the technological warfare and the bio the biodome, the way it's weaponized, I have noticed how they're running transmissions around like a lot of covert signals are running because I can tell by the pressure in my head. And I know people that are getting vertigo right now, if they're at their computers or they're not at their computers, but they're having issues with their balance and vertigo with me, because I have so much technology built into me, I can feel it. I can feel the resistance. That's how I can tell when they're doing sweeps and they're trying to run their technology around in our atmosphere. So I can tell you, and this is another thing I want to say real quick, this weaponized virus, in my opinion, has such a radiation oriented signature to it. 
people aren't looking at that, but I'm telling you right now, there's something very radioactive about what's happening right now, and we have to pay attention to that. When you say vertigo, uh, that's interesting. I have been, exp I out of nowhere recently have been experiencing that a lot where I, I, and it's not low blood pressure, even though I can have low blood, blood pressure and a lower temperature that doesn't, I'm not a lizard. And uh, uh -huh. <laughs> whatever, Jer. <laughs> anyway, I have been experiencing vertigo lately and it's it's very strange i do not like heights let me put that up there so it's i don't know you so i i can relate it to that feeling of being on a t in a tall building and looking over and that the butterflies in my belly but i've been experiencing this from time to time recently when i'm doing normal stuff and it's like i have to catch something because i feel really unstable you should keep a uh, keep a log insofar as dates and times that that's happening, and see what's being tracked insofar as if there are if there are satellites overhead. That would be a good idea to just check and see whether it's Starlink or something else. I would definitely keep a, a track to see if there's a pattern with this. But this you're not like I said the first one. There's several several people that I know are getting this. And one thing I would say also is um, you know making sure that you're watching what you're taking in so far as uh, I don't know iodine supplements or whatever you need. But making sure that you have what you need insofar as if there is something radioactive going on that might help you. I will say another thing, if you get the vertigo and you go and lie down with it, now this is what happened to me back in the day when I was interconnected, this is why I can tell you. Uh, I would get vertigo a lot before I would start to do some heavy, heavy, heavy remote viewing with the technology. And whenever I start getting the vertigo, I'd have to go lie down because I hated it. It was really, really just completely taking me down. So I had to go lie down and all of a sudden my miniature telescope starts activating and I can start remote viewing and seeing miniature things. And, and it's, it's really powerful, but it was always during those circumstances of that particular thing the vertigo that triggered that, that actually, actually activated it. So one thing I would pay attention to, you know, what are you getting when you're, or what are you seeing when you're having this type of a thing? Or are you just looking at the vitals itself? Or is there something else happening? Are you able to trust it when it happens that you're not at being first, actually hacked? You know what, when I was first inter interconnected with the technology, I trusted my handler and I trusted everybody very completely. And so far as what I was doing with the technology and my abilities, I was, I was literally at the point where I was very comfortable enough to communicate and say, what am I looking at? You know, I was like that with the technology. So it, it didn't scare me. Um, but, but what did get me a little weird was the vertigo. I don't like it at all. And there were times when I would be in the surveillance room and, you know, when I work surveillance and security, I start getting stuff like that. And I had to learn to control the vertigo to a point where I could actually reset, calibrate, and then be able to go into that world when I needed to, to access data. But it is one of the one of the characteristics insofar as um, the way you can remote view, but it's also technological sweeps and some of the things they can do remotely. And when you say, you know, we have this national state emergency that that keeps the military right here, right now, doing all kinds of beta tests, doing all kinds of things with this type of warfare, including our new, um, you know, the new, what's it called? <laughs> I want to say Space Wars, <laughs> really out there. Oh, yeah, but you know Space Force. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I guess it is Space Wars, but literally <laughs> yeah. all this technology has to be deployed and beta tested on people. And this is an ample time to do it. So just a heads up. You might be psychic and sensitive enough, which I mean, I know you are, especially with your antenna, to attune yourself to these dimensions, even subconsciously. So pay attention to that as well. I'm wondering through all, all of this kind of tech that's being uh, at least uh, unveiled for the public, uh, you know, because I believe it's been here. Uh, and, and that's what you've been saying. Uh, is there a chance that other dimensional things can get through? Is there, you know, I mean, whatever you want to call them, Jerry would say demons. Uh, Just as a joke, though. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, you can Kinda. wrap it anything. Other other entities, other conscious or sentient uh, uh, forms of of life. Is this, is there like, are there portals happening? Well, Jared, the portals, in my opinion, are us. We are the Stargates. But yeah, there are, there's interdimensional space. And there are definitely different types of portals and Stargates that we can traverse through. One thing I will mention also is our, the people that are acting as our polarized enemy right now on the timeline, the ones that are doing the sabotage that are here to control and manipulate, they're entity controlled and they're bringing in their own legions of entities. Now they're not necessarily demons or this or that, but I'm telling you because they're not multidimensional, they have their own interdimensional fields and they bring in entity attachments as well. So we're dealing with that. 
a lot of those entities coming in. Then we're dealing with some other supernatural uh, enhancements, so to speak. But then we have the other species and other life forms that are that are kind of interweaved in the whole thing because we are hybrids. We are multidimensional. We come from the galactic code as well. So we're all bringing in the the species, so to speak, on that level. Uh, I will say, the more you weaponize something, the more attract the more attractive it is from outside the perimeter. So in other words, they're bringing up and they're putting out all these satellites, which you know I don't know if they're trying to cloak and create all these signals to create jammers so that they can you know, stop incoming entities or signatures or whatever else, but it attracts more attention in the cosmos. It doesn't cloak this, this world in the illusion of actually it works quite opposite. So we're very noisy right now, very noisy, especially with the new satellites. So that's something to look at. And that's reflected in the Schumann resonance, believe it or not. Correct. So uh, th there were so many things I thought of to ask you when you were just talking, but I forgot them all now. Damn it. Um, I, I do remember one now. There was one, some, I've, I've heard this from one person that, um, this was back in, D, in January or early February. This person was talking about how, um, the Suleimani assassination by our, our administration somehow changed the timeline and allowed this let's call it a new group of entities to steer things. If that makes sense. You know, are you talking about Project Looking Glass? No, no, or no. something like that? No, 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 no. Okay. So like the assassination of Suleimani actually changed our trajectory. It's highly like, possible. When that happened. And because it wasn't, it wasn't planned, apparently, mm -hmm. according to this person. And as such, that whole thing was orchestrated by this new cabal, if you will, not humans, but extraterrestrial, interdimensional, whatever. They're just this group of other entities that have their own agenda. And I forget who, to, who was talking about this, and I apologize for that, but uh, how it's unclear what's going to happen now, what's going forward, because the narrative has been broken. And then this happened, and I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. Just the yeah. court, you know, between those two things, like hmm, maybe this is, maybe it is, there's so many, I have so many thoughts about this, like how this whole thing mirrors the narrative of earth being quarantined from the rest of the universe, like that whole thing. You know, mm -hmm. and well, uh, I can tell you that we don't belong here as a, as a star being, as a 3% population I've touched on in my videos, that the star people certainly don't belong here. And uh, we're not part of this illusion or space time configuration initially. Uh, we will and do have access to go home without being imprisoned. What they're doing here, in my opinion, with the imprisonment thing is is literally linear. And so far as the people that are here are more cabal oriented. Yes, they're entity controlled. And yes, they believe they're talking to whatever whatever demon, demonic god or whatever entity or whatever they think it is, mm -hmm. which is literally probably nothing but an entity imposter. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, they're driven by it. And that is creating a prison here. They have access to a powerful technology to create that illusion. And when you get into people's heads with technology and consciousness and, and start programming their brains to create a reality and then they can't get out of there. They're stuck in that wormhole. That's the imprisonment. And that's what we need to look at as far as putting a stop to that. And that's the misuse of covert warfare. I and mean, that's the stuff I've been calling out for a very long time. And to me, that's the, that's the Achilles heel of what's happening here. That's the driving factor beyond the beast. If they get to your head with the technological sin signatures and try to control, manipulate a reality and then keep that signal there so that you can't change the frequency. Yeah, that's, that's an imprisonment. And that's not supposed to be happening. That's against universal law. There's, a, there's actually accountability for that, which it's not like they get to relive and reincarnate. They actually go extinct by universal code. That's not religious code. That's not God's code. That's not man's version of law. That's universal code, man. That's just something you don't do. And they are doing it. So this is what's probably creating a lot of problems off planet. And, and of course, they're ignorant and they're arrogant and they're egotistical. Yeah, no, totally. And you just reminded me of something else, too, that I had heard that... Um... That, that humans are unique or the, the, the animals on this planet are unique that they give birth to their new to offspring, which this person was saying is also against universal law to be parasitic of someone's energy without their consent to take their DNA. I thought that was an interesting concept. Now, it is interesting. You know, I, I, animals are very sacred. They're pure energy, pure light. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so far as the way this world is, it's been terraformed. So everything that you see that you think is organic to this world is not. It's actually coming from outside another world. Mm -hmm. We brought it here right down to the water. So, so literally, yeah, it's cool. And it looks like a very unique blue world. 
but literally it was, yeah, it's unique, all right, because it's been terraformed. <laughs> so that goes with the animals as well. And they certainly don't deserve to be here and be part of the imprisonment program. And that's something that I, I sense will change soon enough. Yeah, but right now you're seeing a lot of other things happening with people and, and the um, lack of food and the access to food. Oh, yeah. You know, that sort of thing going on as well. It's I saw a news article the other day. It's something like one in four people are going to starve to death in the next two years. Like, oh, that's awesome. Well, you know what, though? We can live on energy if we have to. I mean, I, I know this is... You've heard of prana, you know, breathing sure. life force, universal life force energy. That literally can keep you alive and sustained. I know it sounds really out there, but when push comes to shove and your body recalibrates to other multidimensional fields beyond this one, you can live in those worlds without without having to worry about food the way people eat here. So once again, you've you've seen the the, the masters in India and other yeah, other absolutely. bodhisattvas that literally can can eat. They don't eat anything literally, minimal amounts of food, but it's prana, it's life force, it's energies from the cosmos that sustains their field. That's how it normally is. There's also the breatharians. Correct. Mm -hmm. I've heard about them. I haven't tried that technique, but you know, meditations is similar. Just mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, it does fill you up energetically speaking, and it would it would stop you from craving foods. And and this is an interesting little uh, exercise. If you get cravings and you're not sure what you're needing, try meditating and see if that doesn't solve the issue. Because sometimes it isn't about food; it's about energy. It's about what you need to bring into your body to sustain you. Cool. I've been, so through this, one of the things that, so I, I'm not one to tell people what to do at all, live your life and, uh, and then live with your choices. Right. So, but I, I must say that I have been happy to see some of the terrible practices that go, that are happening and have been for a long time happening in the meat industry come to a halt now when it, and when i say that i i love how the amish treat their animals i love how conscientious people treat treat the the animals they're going to eat you know with respect and allow them a quality of life that's the least you could do i think and uh this kind of desensitized absolutely cruel industry that's come up around meat production has been terrible and so there's something in me that has been enjoying the the wider look at this industry and and how much people really rely on on meat from the industry and how desensitized and detached they are from the process of what it is. So I'm getting kind of a, and you know, I, I love seafood and stuff and I'll pull, I will pull up to good me. I'm also one of those nerds that thinks I'm like one of those nerds that thinks the food I'm eating. I just do. I don't know why I think because it's programmable to me and I'm, I'm trying to detach the food I'm eating from any, any nasties and then reprogram it as I bring it into me and into my temple so that there's some sort of cohesion and uh, symbiotic relationship of healing towards quality of longevity and all of that. So uh, it's like a even though there's an agenda behind this there's i think this is one of the good things happening personally i'm not sure where you stand on that solar so what you think but it, it it has been kind of sad to see to see you know the animal cruelty that goes on oh i agree no i don't like seeing animals slaughtered at all i totally agree with you and actually i don't eat meat i eat i do eat fish but uh my meat if ever i buy it is for my dog <laughs> i don't eat meat and I don't know how I can make him vegan or vegetarian or whatever, but um, but I don't need it. No, I, I agree in a sense that I don't require meat. Some people may, maybe they need them for their systems, but I think there's a humane way if you are going to do that. And if you're a hunter and I've touched on this before, yeah, you can bless the spirit of the animal and do it with respect, but that's not happening. It is disgusting. It's traumatizing and it leaves a very bad residue on this planet and the illusion of it, it leaves a bad residue on people. That's why we bless our food and we change the vibration of our food before we eat it, regardless of where it came from, whether it's food or a vegetable or whatever, or a meat, it doesn't matter. It's the idea of raising the vibration and changing the molecular structure through consciousness once again, as we alter the food. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I honestly would like to see that go away. I don't know if we can, and believe me, I, <clears throat> and I don't begrudge anybody a hamburger or whatever they think they need. But I think that there's times that we just need to change everything and we can go with different products that taste even better than meat. 
So I've tried some of those and it's, they're phenomenal burgers that you wouldn't even suspect weren't me. They're fantastic for a heads up on that. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's the thing. I don't, I don't push anything towards anyone. I'm all, I'm all about free will and choice and all that. So I, I don't begrudge people eating what they eat. It, I'm all it's about just, bacon. Yeah. And you know, it's how it gets to your plate is all. I'm just saying, how did it get there? And, and to have a, a relationship with, with what you're eating, uh, it is, is a good conscientious thing to do in my opinion. But again, we live with our choices and we take that on energetically. So yeah, I, it, it's just one of my laurels. I just don't no, I agree with you 100% on that. And it's true, yeah. you get entangled with the energetic signature. And eventually, I have to tell you, a lot of people are on the keto diet right now, which is supposedly, it does help you lose weight. I know a ton of people that have used it. But I have to say, eventually, it will talk, it'll make your, your system toxic. So nothing, nothing is really that good for you in the illusion of, but I, I think that at some point, people need to take a second look at the animal kingdom. And animals in general are getting abused. I mean, I'm a very uh, animal advocate when it comes down to any kind of animal abuse, you know, especially when it comes to dogs and such. So no, I understand. And I think that this is where the, that's where the darkness of mankind really lies. And that needs to change yesterday. There's a lot of evil that needs to be resurrected into something positive. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's just worth mentioning that some of this reset has had, it, I think it's, there's some active consciousness that's going on with all the craziness as well, where people are really questioning how, we could find ourselves in this position on the planet, you know, is, is it's every on, you know, everyone was basically in lockdown is still in lockdown pretty much. Uh, and some of it is really good. That's coming out of it right now. I, you know, it's hard to see that, but some, some of it is. And I think part of that wave of, of consciousness, it's saying who's, who's making these choices for me and do they have the agency over me really to make these choices and what can I do? And this is, that's a big stepping stone for many people that just did not question the reality around them until now. Yeah, I agree. Well, they didn't see it coming. I don't think anybody really saw it coming per se. And part of it is a first strike weapon. If you ask me, like I said, this is bioterrorism, regardless of how, Things are flowing in the energy world of, of do we eat meat or don't or whatever. This is a warfare program and it's psychological warfare. And there is an abuse of power going on where people are violating constitutional rights, governors are. So once again, in a crisis situation, some people are really taking advantage of that. And this is something that could have been avoided. It could have been addressed differently. We could have gone down another path without this type of craziness. But, you know, it's uh, what, I, what I find most disappointing for myself is coming from where I've come with covert warfare, I see the kind of moves that they're making on the chessboard. I also see the administration not doing much to counter or go after the initial first strike. And to me, that is a huge crime. That is something that is death penalty oriented. So once again, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the covert intelligence map and why they haven't countered the people that initiated this, why they're allowing the country of the United States to get taken down and why they're creating this, this bonfire of destruction. And people might say, well, it might be, you know, later on it'll be better. It's not going to be better if we get into a very bad civil war and they use the technology the way I know they can use it, which literally minimizes your state of being where you're in such trauma that you're not able to function in multidimensional fields of energy. So I'm looking at more of the dark side of it, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and the illusion of it. What I, what I like about my book, Alien Intelligence, is that it touches on that. Uh, but I do think that there is a big interest in our DNA right now, and it's not this virus. This is something else they're looking for in the DNA signature. So that's that's something that I think people should very much pay attention to. Yeah, I I did a I agree hundred percent with the DNA signature. That's what I had seen initially uh, before this rolled out it was that this was a sweep, and that DNA bloodlines were part were the main one of the main. Uh, tendrils here involving this and the second wave's another if you notice the people that seem to have been more accurately diagnosed with the SARS one which is what we're talking about uh were a certain 
have a certain genetic code. And I think that there are going to be waves of this. And then also I find something interesting with the heat signature aspect. And I, my mind went, this is just me wandering. This is me thinking out loud, right? This is just where I'm going. Uh, but heat signature as an identification for your temperature, I started to think about cold-blooded versus warm-blooded beings and animals on the planet, right? And uh, and then that tied back into genetic signatures and uh, certain bloodlines. And it all seems to start laying out a particular network of information that somehow connects in my own brain about what's going on here at a, at a deeper level. Do you see any connection with the genetics of, of different countries here and all this? You know, I, I see the, uh, when they're looking at your signature and your heat signature and thermal, I know they have thermal imaging and a lot of other things. To me, I, I just immediately go to radiation radiation sickness, radiation toxicity, and looking for something that connects you or has a marker on it that you've been uh, perhaps uh, saturated in radiation, so to speak. That could be contact E, that can be MK ultra-oriented induction programs, that can be my labs, that can be a lot of things. But that's what I see. And I've noticed more and more, that's where my radar is going is towards checking radiation signatures for some reason or another. I think that there's a, there's a, there's a key piece of the puzzle that people aren't catching and also this particular weaponized virus that they want to call this particular word corona. I don't believe that's the name of the virus at all. As a matter of fact, I think this is more of a radiation signature sickness than it is anything connected to the virus they're mentioning. Now, I think that they've created some kind of a cloned identity to it where they're trying to pass it off as this virus, but I don't believe that. That's just my gut instincts telling me. So I think that there's a mix of stuff going on and I'm not saying it's 5G. I'm saying that we have been saturated in, in a lot of radiation and that I think it's starting to show and people are getting, whether their markers are connected in through their own, if you have implants like me, then you have all this stuff in your antenna that's going to show up. And I think a lot of other people might have that also. But if you look at the illness and the symptoms, I put it on my Twitter account, it's very, very similar to what they have people in the hospital for right now, right down to the lungs. You just totally set off something in my head. I was thinking about, <clears throat> when you talk about radiation, I was thinking, okay, so complex thought think about all the shit that went down right when this started up and how it was like really panicked and then they put people into cheyenne mountain right to, to shelter Correct. essential yep. troops and all the stuff underground activity went nuts what if so 10 years ago almost was the fukushima thing and you almost never hear about that but if you remember it's it's put dumping what was it a hundred thousand pounds of radiation into the ocean every day, some crazy number like that. What right? What if that's you know irradiated stuff to the point where it's manifesting as this virus now? Or well, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I mean, as far as that could be a contributing factor, I'm looking more at the atmosphere, like the weaponization of the biodome. But also, was it uh, Chernobyl has had a fire? I don't know if you're familiar with this or not. Yes, been fighting I heard it that over a month now, and that to me is interesting. Yeah, it's out of control. Actually. Yeah, but have you looked if, into that? I, 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 I am a, I'm aware of it. I have not looked into it. I knew it was still burning. I know it was getting yeah. close to the reactor. I haven't checked. Since I just think that's time. weird. Okay. I, and honestly, my head is always in covert warfare because that's where I come from to some degree. Dude, but, what isn't weird today? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think we all need space suits. I think we all need to get the hell out of here and <laughs> on another planet until they chill out over here. I'm tired of this. But can we even do that? I mean, you don't go in a space suit to another planet. No, but I'm just saying, I'll, I'll do whatever I need to to get out of here immediately. <laughs> you know, like steal a black triangle, <laughs> that kind of thing. Have you but, seen uh, um, this new show on Amazon called Upload? You know, everybody keeps telling me about these shows. It sounds like something I've been through with technology, but yeah, it's where they're transferring consciousness into somebody else. Yeah, but only when you die. Well, yeah, I talked about that in my books years ago. They probably got the idea from me to put their stupid series together once again. You know, that doesn't surprise me. It's, it's yeah, people read my books. They're like, oh, there was a there was a show on about this. <laughs> well, that's nice. They probably got it from me because I was one of the, the what do they call it? Patient zeros for covert warfare. I don't even say that with arrogance, you guys. I just say it because it's true. No, okay? no, no, no. I, I just wanted to put out there that the, the point of the show is not to glamorize it. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Because it's not pretty. Yes. 
you know, and, Dollhouse was another one. And I don't know, Nish, if you've seen that or Jerry, that one is close with the interface of technology and creating different personalities for these women. I, I have not seen it. You need to see that. But now, that reference... one, my friend who was also, she's been through different warfare programs. She turned me on to that. I was like, oh no, I, I don't even want to watch this. But literally they, you know, they go into this world where they're, they're sitting in this type of machine where it interfaces a different type of personality into their brainwave activity and creates another personality that they uh, they act out on. So very, very close to the technology I was interfaced with and so far as signatures and synthetic telepathy and the overlays and things they do with brainwave activity. There are so many, there's like altered carbon. There's so, it's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, and it, it really is almost the norm. And I, and I will say one thing that I do allude to in my book, Alien Intelligence, we are the technology. We have the technology within us naturally. So we're not necessarily cyborgs, we're bioelectric technological beings. And we do have the capability to interface with technology whether it's from this world or off-world intelligence, that's what we do. But what happens is when, once people get onto that or in a national security or somebody else, they want to interrupt that with a mind control program so they can be, be, have a third party access or control, manipulate what's happening with the data stream so that we don't get sensitive information. But my point is, and what I'm standing up for is that universal law says they don't have a right to do that and that this is creating havoc and they need to be dealt with. Okay, so this is the point where we're dealing with multidimensional multi beings. We're not dealing with just regular humanoids here on the world of enslavement. It's changing the whole dynamic. Yeah, I agree. I 100% I, I agree with you. And also, it is worth noting, one of the great things about your books are their time state, you know, they're time stamped, and they've been mm -hmm. out there, and it shows where you were on this curve. And right. so that's, you know, I mean, that's something for people to actually take note of. You were talking about this stuff way before it started to become what it is now on a whole different level that, you know, in a whole different way than was being presented at the time. You were, you know, years ahead of that. So, which for whatever it's worth and not blowing your horn, Solaris, it is it's credibility on Correct. another level. I agree with you. Thank you. And if people pay attention and they watch the documentary DVD, that's gold. My goodness. And especially now that Pert's dead, that's, I don't, if people were really smart detectives, they'd be able to see what I see. It's just that they're not, you know, it's a lot of work, but they can dive into it and understand it. Everything is, is correlated correctly. Every single detail. So it's, yeah, I would encourage people to read my books. They're on Amazon. It's not a shameless plug. It's called information and uh, you definitely want to get up to speed or, well, now you are up to speed, but understand why and what the components are behind the weaponization. Yeah. Well, it's also juicy. You know, it's juicy. Mm -hmm. If anyone that's paying attention to any of this stuff, you know, your work's juicy and right there. I'm wondering, where do you think, so if we stay on this current trajectory, where are we headed? Right now, if nothing changes, and this is the it, nothing gets in the way of this program, what's going to happen, in your opinion? In my opinion, I think we're going to have something worse than the death camps and the SS back in the day. I think from what I see from their trajectory, what I can see is that they want eradication of people. The reason they isolate people, yeah, you can say it's partially for facial recognition and this and that, and triangulating energetically and getting your signature by remote satellite, but there's something else more nefarious here. People are getting murdered. And then as I alluded to in my video uh, for witch files, there are no witnesses to watch this. There's no witness. There's no sacred witness of the family there to see what's going on when these people are getting taken down through whether it's a misuse of medical technology with a, a ventilator or whatever. So once again, in my opinion, I think they're looking for their kill shots, which would be eradicating the people they want to take down, anybody who could be a problem or a threat and leaving a very small percentage of people left to control and manipulate more like the, the useful idiots. And I don't see how they can possibly pull it off without a huge bloodbath. And I think that's what we're gearing up for. Now, maybe this will change and all of a sudden something like we'll have this beautiful moment and, and things will alter. But from what I see, I see that dark tide. And I, I, that's why I'm prepared for anything. I'm neutral positive, but I'm prepared for anything right now energetically. And I always tell people to, to power up, armor up, and stay in the multidimensional field higher and above this one so that you're not sucked down into this world. I don't want to stay in their world. I don't want anything to do with it, but I'm good at fighting it. I'm really good at fighting in their world, but I don't want to be in it, you know? So that's my two cents on that. I'm, I'm hoping that we have a better outcome, but you know, what's really interesting as well, the 2020 and 2022 was always about power struggles. It was going to be about power struggles, technological struggles. 
it almost mirrored and had an inversion to the, like an Atlantean timeline. And it certainly appears that way now. So they're showing their fangs and their teeth. It's just to, to who's going to stand up and fight. You know, are you going to bring in the big ships? You know, I see all these people out there with CE5. I don't see you bringing in your ships. You know, you get, you get flashes in the sky all the time, which of course is us. But nonetheless, you can't tell them that. So once again, if they want those flashes in the sky, I'm like, hey, you know what? We're in crisis right here. It'd be nice if they'd show up, right? Maybe we could use some backup, right? Yeah, I, you know, it wouldn't I, suck. It wouldn't suck. And I think that there is something going on with the unrolling of of others, right? With the stuff going on in the apparent sky, the apparent whatever's going on, and there's, you know, the the ET idea is being rolled out and deepened and widened. And uh and so and now with everyone's head kind of, most people's head cracked open with with the idea of what's really going on here because of the numbers game with all this that you know even the staunch believers in in the established idea of what is going on are starting to question that and i've been experiencing that in my little trips out into the world recently where people are like asking these questions as we stand six feet apart and uh so so there's that i'm also wondering about how oh i don't even know i i lost where i had that that's why i usually have my notepad on me uh where i was going with that lord have like mercy we're all going into another world another <laughs> orbit i know all of us have been going into other orbits while we're talking that's interesting but he's speaking of which i don't want to distract you but i just want to say one thing and make one point to me, it feels like, and I talk about our new space-time configuration, which we're supposed to be in and not this one, it feels like we're being pulled out of orbit. I don't know if they're even mentioning this or not. Everything's off. I know our axis is different, but and magnetic north is towards Siberia and this and that, but there's something else happening. And I mean, you look, look at the sky and the illusion of our biodome being weaponized to such a degree, which is almost like the, the, organic, the or, organic aspects of it are collapsing, and then we've got space expanding with it. So to me, we're really, it's almost like we're being merged in the envelopes beyond this, this boundary that we've had for so long. You know, I, I just feel like we're being pulled away. The whole world is. So that's just, I know it sounds really weird, but that's what I get. Well, there's, you know, there's all that, they shut down a lot of the telescopes. There's all of a sudden this rash of asteroids and stuff coming that they, that were all of a sudden a surprise out of nowhere. Uh, and and then you know like atlas that has you know they come and then they get broken up and there's there's clearly some sort of of course this is all feeding into fear which keeps people enslaved as well and keeps people wanting safety you know so bring on bring on the safety net whatever that is uh so it, it's definitely widening in that sense where would the, we see the Hegelian dialect very, very clearly here on many levels, not just on the on COVID nineteen as a as a virus that has a vaccine at the end of the tunnel here, but also this um, von Braun stuff that's p possibly at play here. the The idea of there is there is some sort of alliance of others that are really us but of others and so there's just so much at play on the chessboard right now it's overwhelming for even some of us that listen and give ear to to a wide net of things it's like at any moment something new could happen and has been happening so i'm, I'm just mm -hmm sitting back with my popcorn so to speak that's a going <laughs> what's ha well i think it's definitely the good way to be also i want to mention we're in our second hour so p please call in if you want to uh ask solaris some questions uh and that's definitely a wink out there to madfinger i actually he have questions already oh cool and and we would love to have you call in also so but not for 15 minutes <laughs> one one question and you're out of here. It's like, eight, eight like that. Click. What questions do you have, Jared? So, um, I forget who it was. Jag, it was Jag0937. Wanted to know uh, if plasma energy had anything to do with 
with mind control from other dimensions or other entities, non, non-military tech kind of stuff. Okay. And Reg- those- regular uh, supernatural plasma, which would be, it's not mind control oriented, it is another life form and intelligent design. Mm-hmm. We have plasma, we're plasma oriented too, to some degree. So that to me is pure energy. It has nothing to do with a nefarious background to it, unless there's something connected with a, maybe a, an entity attachment from a spirit or a ghost or something like that. But I don't see anything, uh, anything negative in that in any form. Plasma is a, a great conductor of energy. That's why they try to hijack it all the time for, for various uh, technologies. Uh, I see. Okay, cool. Well, it can be weaponized. I don't know if I answered that part, but you know what I mean. But naturally uh, yeah. it's not. And it's raw organic origins. It's not. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, you just reminded me too of this, this fascination I have about <laughs> how people who have no psi ability, and this is obviously anecdotal, but um alleged people who are possessed quote unquote possessed exhibit some 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 do some psi activity either telekinesis or or uh esp of some sort have you ever thought about that i mean is that crazy what how does that how would that possibly work easy because the host gets activated the body everybody's psychic everybody has the ability to be Mm multidimensional So if they have a host attachment or an entity attachment, whatever it is, whether it's technological or or something coming in from an interdimensional field, it still has an ability. It's like a control panel. It can go in and activate certain things and work the body and and allow that body to be activated in levels it never had any access to because of where it comes from. It comes from an interdimensional or multidimensional field. It comes from a vast, vast intelligence systems in its own world. So it connects in and, and I start switching on things, uh, in my opinion, anyway. And and that person more than likely will always have those abilities. They may not be to the full potential once they become exercised in the illusion of, but you know what I mean? But that's the whole idea behind it. We have those abilities normally mm-hmm. when we activate and it's up to your state of consciousness to be in control of that and not be you know, nefarious with it. But, but that's the beauty of it. And I think that's what they're afraid of. I think that that's where the fear comes in is what can we do without the control mechanisms here and why are they so frightened? And that's one of the things that you, you know, right there. All right, sweet. I got one more question. It was from Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne. Uh, she wants to, <laughs> this is something that she and I have been riffing on for like the last two weeks. What do you think about all the 33s that are popping up around the, the, the COVID stuff? The 33s? Yeah. The number 33 is showing up everywhere and all like all the news stories and mm. about like the number of deaths and Oh, okay. Well, that could be psychological imprinting to some degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the 33, obviously, master frequency initiation number, but also is a six. And a six is a number of limitation in mankind. So once again, it's not as powerful as people think it is. It's what's beyond the 33 that's the power. It is an imprinting, in my opinion. It's cueing people psychologically to pay attention to those numbers, just like any other number that we get. You know, the certain there's certain numbers that people get get activated by seeing and observing even on their clocks at certain hours. So that's one yeah. of them. If you start seeing the 911 thing, I think that's the biggest one. That's the biggest activation frequency they use. Mm. Yeah, the, this I've I've in in my mind I always think of it as energy frequency. So, yeah, yep. I agree, I totally agree there. And mm-hmm. this reminds me of this concept I heard someone talking about about how so if you tune into that frequency, it means you're putting energy into it, which means you've got a bi-directional connection to whatever plane of existence that energy is from, if it's if there is one, Correct. right? Or that call it that density level. And these types of things are things that hold you back if we were ascending to a new density, right? These types of things would keep you back from They keep you they keep your attention in other areas where yeah. you could be in other much more powerful worlds, yeah. And that's the whole idea. The, the digital world, the technological world, the cyber world, the worlds that are connected to artificial intelligence are very interesting, but they have controllers and handlers in those worlds. So the ones that I'm talking about ours here, the, the reverse engineered worlds, they're very handled. So it's very hard to be liberated when you're activated and integrated into those worlds. When you're outside of that, the ascended machines are not like that. And I talk about those once again in alien intelligence. When you're connected to a, uh, the alien machine technology, which is our, it's our cosmic ancestry to some degree, symbiotic exchange of, of energies, it doesn't function like that at all. And you have no limitation. There's no psychological warfare. You're, everybody has been psychologically programmed yeah. and the activation programs are coming out. Yeah, there's, there's like a, a low intensity <laughs> program going on at all times everywhere. 
Well, now it's all fear. Fear is the driving force yeah, and fear. Nobody true. can function in fear. In a state of fear, nobody can function. It's trauma. They've turned us into reptilians. Well, <laughs> you know, they don't really have the power people think they do, but I'll tell you, I, it's I really kidding. amazing to watch everybody fall into place. I know. I know. I was shocked. It's almost by creepy. That. And I'm like, the first night I heard about this stuff, I was getting my bug out bag. I mean, I was, <laughs> Me like, too. Just, Me too. I was full speed ahead in the house packing. I was like, I didn't know where I was going there, but I was ready. So <laughs> I was, were. I was talking to Briss and to John Briss and I'm like, dude, I'm coming up there with my bug out bag. Got some bullets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that's another thing too. I don't like the distancing thing. I don't like not being able to hug people nah. or shake hands. I mean, I'm not one for shaking hands, any illusion, but hugging people and meeting with people or doing ceremonial work or whatever it is, all the, the religious people, the Christians think it's about them. Oh, we can't do our, our practices in our churches. No, the pagans have a say, they're having a hard time. How are they supposed to get together and circle work? This is affecting everybody on that level, right? I shook someone's hand the other day. It was great. What? I shook someone's hand. Oh, you did? Yeah. Good. You yeah. know what? I like to That's see a radical act right now. Hands <laughs> and having a good time and hugging. And this is what I was mentioning about the 4th of July. We need to have something where we are physically engaged and celebration of spirit in the 4th of July, Independence Day. We are not gonna do this anymore because this is an imprinting, this thing about being dis disassociation. In MK Ultra, when you get through, you know, they want you isolated and alone and away from everybody with no access to any support system other than them. I'm swearing to you that this reminds me of that, except you're encapsulated in your own residence under house arrest. I don't like it, it really, it's not even triggering to me. It just reminds me of so much of these programs that I'm so familiar with, with these warfare departments. It reminds me of Nazi Germany. Well, yes, it's SS 101. They're not good enough to be Nazis, I'll tell you no. that much, but they sure act like them. But they you take the same tactics and they don't have the, paper clip. And they, CIA, go ahead, sorry. No, no, you're fine. No, I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna say they don't have the, you know, the Aldebarans helping them out. Well, Aldebaran's not necessarily a negative. And I know plenty of walk-ins that were connected to Aldebaran and I'm not necessarily you know, from here either. So, you know, and I, I, I don't want to keep referencing my book, Alien Intelligence, because it sounds like a plug, but I do reference them a little bit and also the Brill Society and how the, the abilities of these women who are really switched on in their own fields of energy, which is really charged with electricity, are so capable of, of interdimensional travel and also integrating other life forms and in communication systems. And I'm convinced that they were also connected to an artificial intelligence with synthetic telepathy as well, very similar to where I've been. But I did make that point in my book because it is a gift. And when it gets weaponized and there are handlers involved, it just becomes poison. There's one of the things I've noted in the last, I'd say week easily, and definitely in the last few days. So it's amping and others may have noticed it, but I took a, a break from social media, although today I was Miss Twitter, uh, is how offended People are getting, and this is the sign of the times anyway, at the correlation between the genocide and, of course, when anyone thinks genocide, the only place they generally go is to is to World War II. It, you know, no one thinks Armenia, no one thinks the, all the other genocides going on, including right now that before this. Uh, so it's interesting that that's where the collective's mind goes. And so, right. uh, and no genocide is, is fantastic. And it's just, it's, that's the genocide that seems to be the, the, the flagship and how offended people are with the overlay of this craziness that we're in where we're in lockdown and there's serious, serious, serious similarities to what, what was happening in, in World War II with, you know, Russia and, and German stuff and, uh, and how it's triggering people that it's, it's not at all similar. And yet it is. And so I'm, I'm curious as to what you think about why that would, why is this still triggering people is that want to see that World War II be still the crowning height of genocide and not have something co-opt it and be bigger. This is a big, big thing we're going through right now. This right. is a big yeah. world event. Right. It's not just about, well, even if you look at Nazi Germany, I mean, it wasn't just the Jews that were pulled into those camps. It was everybody. A lot of different people were pulled in. 
but I think the right. Right. If you were gay, if you were a gypsy, I mean, it was, I mean, there's so many people that got pulled in. What if you were a gay gypsy? All of it. And if you were just an outsider or a dissident of any kind, and then of course the Jewish thing as well. Right. You know, the, I I don't, I hate talking about TV, but that's about all I've been doing lately. Um, This new season of Westworld, I finished watching that. And the whole idea of the season is that an AI is running society, basically. And well, let me tell you something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Let me get this out. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Inter- I, let me finish. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the idea is this AI is is running all the humans, and the the robots escape from the island, and wants to tear that shit down and let, give people a choice, right? Um what you find out and this is spoiler alert so cover your ears if you haven't seen it um at the end what you find out is that the company that that owns the ai has has identified that their plan wouldn't work because there were what they call outliers and that's kind of what we're seeing today. I mean, there's correlation in the whole up the whole season, but this outlier concept, and then people started protesting a couple of weeks ago, you know, and it kind of falls into that same thing. Anyway, they ended up putting these people in hospitals and keeping them basically sedated, <laughs> and eventually That's then weird. froze them. But yeah, I just found the correlations to what's going on today similar. Well, there's no coincidence there. You know what's really interesting about AI, what they say AI is? I mean, artificial intelligence, you know, that's obviously the word, but but to them, you know, like I said, man's version of AI is not an off-world intelligence. It's man's version. And it is not gonna be a dominating force here as long as it's programmed by humanoids or what they call humanoids, even though they're not. But you know, I mean, the people here, the best genius nerds, it'll always be a box of garbage. I'm sorry. And this is my point that the ascended machines are not connected to the underground technologies. They never had access to the off-world intelligence. And the off-world intelligence, which is in the right space-time configuration, which I write about in alien intelligence, is what's going to crush their technology. I know this sounds strange in sci-fi, but I'm telling you, the AI, the ascended machines are no friend of them. So I think this is what they've been prepping for all along, was something to fight those machines off planet. They're not going to be able to do it. They're going to get taken down. In a, in a blink of an eye. But, but let me tell you another thing about these species out there. They're our ancestors and they will not harm us. Now you see all everybody shutting down the radio telescopes and everything else. And I'm telling you right now, they're afraid, but we won't be, we won't be afraid. They're afraid. That's the difference. I just want to make that point. So someone just asked in chat if, if AIs can get viruses or viri. Well, man's version of AI, if it's a software program and it runs with cyber warfare, sure, you can all kinds of viruses. Um, the viruses, technologically speaking, are, are kind of like backdoors and bugs. So in other words, it's a different heterodyne system. It, it just depends on the system itself and what they're using for artificial intelligence, whether it's a host or it's a um, computer. But yeah, there are specific viruses they can give people. If you're, if, you're, if you're interfacing with technology like me, they can try to activate a virus inside of you and do a kill shot to take you down. There's no doubt about that. That's why the star people what I call the star people, which is not just Native American, it's, it's all of us who are hybrids. We have a bloodline in a, in a celestial cosmic code that it gets activated through the, through the correct space-time configuration. And that's why I'm alluding to, I think some of this technological stuff going on here and, and some of this craziness with the witch hunt about the DNA and, and this virus has something to do with checking out our bloodlines and checking out what we can be activated or deactivated as and how much of a threat we actually are. And I don't know how much I should be saying. Honestly, this is, this is probably more than classified what we're talking about but I feel like I need to talk about it, so. We have a caller. It's Tessa hey. Dick. <laughs> Is it well, Tessa? Hello, Tessa. I love you. Oh, <laughs> favorite. Hi, Tessa. <laughs> She's so cute. How are you, Miss Kitty? Hi. Oh, you have to uh, pause your video. Turn off your radio when you call in. Um, um, um. We have ladies and gentlemen and others out there. We have uh, Tessa Dick that has called in. So we're grateful for that because nope, we love gone. her. And she's coming. Oh, she'll, co- she'll be back. I know. I love her so much. Yeah. Brilliant lady. She's brilliant and has quite the uh, wonderful background to her. Well, yeah, I'm sure she can relate to a lot of this stuff, especially with Phil. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, that's um, yeah, amazing information right there. And I'm actually, sure she's that, calling back too. in. She is. There she is. Connecting. There it says audio. Hello, Tessa. Do you hear us? I'm not sure. Maybe the audio um, or the video now that works. I heard her before. You just have to hit your audio. I'm in the room now. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Welcome. I uh, clicked something I shouldn't have when I was closing YouTube. That's a life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Close the Zoom. You know. well, I didn't want an echo. No, you sound great. Yeah. This virus thing is such a scam. Mm -hmm. I agree. And people are so frightened. Are they pretty bad where you are? Oh. Nervous Nellies everywhere. Um. And a few who just kind of take it in stride. We have, we have had nine cases in a population of at least 10,000. I think it's more like 20,000. One died, so now we have eight cases, and they're recovering. That's nothing. That's, that's, that's the, the, the shutdown for that amount. Once yeah, again, in my psychological county. warfare involved with this type of thing. Well, the yeah, entire the... county has fewer than 3,000 cases and about uh, 200 deaths. No, 100. 104, they said today. Well, Tessa, you, with Philip's work and then yours, there's a lot here that's at play that was written about prior to this under the guise of fiction what are you how are you viewing i mean you came in giving us an idea of how you're viewing all this which we're with you on but what are you thinking how do you th are you impressed with how this has just rolled out so swiftly phil wrote about something quite similar in uh the penultimate truth uh, very early novel of his, early 60s. In that one, uh, people were building robots. They were living underground building robots for the war effort. And it turned out that there was no war and the wealthy and powerful elite needed robot servants on their landed estates while well, most people were living in basically in bunkers because of the war. We're supposed to hunker down while the elite play golf, get their hair cut, all kinds of things that we're not allowed to do because we're just the people who pay the taxes that buy them all their stuff. My water's empty. Let me go till it. She's right. This, this and also Stellaris is, is one of the things I've noted is that there's this now that we've separated humans from doing jobs, essentially a lot of except for essential jobs, there there is this noted robot rollout that's going it's been happening, but i I see that it yeah, like Tessa automated. was just talking about, yeah, that we're going to start seeing more robotics take over all the human jobs. Yeah, un non essential means you're not worth anything to them. It's really interesting to me, you know, insofar as obsolete goes, you know, like the Twilight Zone episode, you're obsolete. We're not really obsolete, but it is interesting. I think the 1% are obsolete. And at some point, you know, we were never meant to live like this to begin with in the illusion of being slaves to a corporation or a government or a forced religion indoctrination program stuff. So you're seeing all this stuff breaking down. I just hope people understand that they've been had to some degree and that, yes, you're right, Tessa, because even now, even that was even though that was a book by by Phil, 
what's going on now is that they're not being affected in Hollywood. The overpaid entertainment industry isn't being affected from what I understand. They still have their supplies and their big mansions and their food and they're not hurting. So once again, that's just a certain percentage of people that are actually dealing with this right now. And, and everything is, it gives them the perfect, perfect timing for automation. And that means the driving, the automated driving with the big trucks and vehicles where the truckers can't make it. Oh, it, it's the only way they could get everything automated is to make it impossible for honest people to work for a living. It also eliminates many small businesses, so the uh, monopolies of the corporations can increase. That's true. A lot of personal businesses, even mine, well, not that I do a whole lot, but anybody who has an independent business is going to suffer in these consequences. There's no doubt about it. Oh, they're even trying to develop AI programs to write novels. They want well, to where's replace the spirit in that? That's, that's a joke, huh? Next, so there won't be any artists or poets or novelists. Our newspapers will be written by machines. They might All as well be. be. Probably. Well, that sounds like 2112 from Rush. I mean, that's what he was trying to write about back then. Nobody paid attention. Mm. Of syrinx. Yep. Not that I got digressed, but you know what I'm saying. I think he was trying to alert people all along. Somehow, some way he got swept into it. Yeah, it's, it's, um, and many people are going along with it because they're getting government checks for sitting at home. I never got a check. Me neither. I, <laughs> I still What's have to work. <laughs> well, I don't have a job, so I can't get unemployment. But they're supposed to send everybody twelve hundred dollars just to shut up and stay home. Yeah, I just find all that so fishy. Just like I don't know anybody who has a real illness either, who's connected to any of this crap that's going on. I don't know how many of you have any, any compensation, but I just think it's weird. Everything seems so, so scripted. Yeah, the the fact that they they had a. I forgot, 1,600 page, $2 trillion bill ready within, what, two, three weeks to give out, like, like they knew things were going to be bad for a while, but, uh, you know, human beings actually got less than, what, 25% of it? They're giving back some of our own money that they've been taking from us all our lives, and oh, we're they'd... supposed to be grateful. I don't think it that was our money. It was fresh money. <laughs> money printers go brr. Right. But they oh, have well, extorted from case, us all along. They've been extorting case, from us. Yeah, it's the money they're going to take from us for the rest of our lives. Well, and our children. Oh, go ahead. Our children, our grandchildren, and anybody else they can exploit. Are they still in their bunkers? Does anybody know? Are they still hiding out down there? As far as I know, they are. Yeah, uh, I think so. I'm like so. down right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I were to get down there, I would know how to get, get around everywhere. I guarantee it. Oh, Just for my I'll make you. I'll make you a CRV target. There's a part two to this. There's there's a second phase of this and a third phase coming. So this is just this is just the beginning. This is like the the opening act well oh, yeah starting on beginning. friday we can buy flowers for mother's day oh yay how nice we still can't get our hair cut my <laughs> hair looks terrible i tried to cut my own hair man <laughs> me you too. Know, on the video with my own witch files but oh my god haircuts are overrated i'm just gonna shave my head Hilarious. You looked really cute in that one. I, I loved was it. Thank you. I did it myself my and I didn't like, I'm not a hairdresser. That's my weakness. Oh, you, you did good. It's times when like I this. Out, I wish I had a Floby. Oh. Oh, Jerry. When I go out, I wear a hat. I I think hats and glasses are a good idea. I've always yeah. thought that. I was raised that way. Um, there's even though I realized that we can be tracked by all kinds of other means, but that was just one of those uh, 
that's just one of those ways to try and work the the invisibility in public also so yeah it's a good shield and it's very glamorous yeah, right. Well, there's glam involved, but there's also the shielding aspect. And then I was hearing something about the radiation involved with all this hitting the top of your head. Yeah. Reminds me, I have to wear a mask tomorrow for other people's peace of mind. I have to find one. So what do you question. think? Somebody, oh, okay, Jerry, go. Someone wanted to know what we thought about the conflicting claims that nicotine helps protect against the virus. Are you asking me that? I'm asking, <laughs> yes, you. I actually have heard that myself. I, I know nicotine's a grounding effect, but I've also heard that it does deflect or somehow it neutralizes the virus. I can't prove that or not, but I have heard that. So it would be interesting to see if, if smokers are getting affected with this particular virus. I'm all for it, for obvious reasons. Yeah, there you go. I don't think it can hurt, quite honestly. Well, at one time, smoking tobacco was the only treatment for uh, tuberculosis. That was before penicillin. Isn't that wild? It's so interesting. Do you have the to kill germs or what, Tessa? <laughs> I guess. It makes you wonder oh, well, what's in modern cigarettes, too. I'm, I'm going to start smoking cigars, battery. guys. <laughs> I don't inhale the smoke. I just puff on them. But uh, I have a lung condition from working near an Air Force runway. I was afraid to light a cigarette there because of the smell of jet fuel. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, my condition improved when I quit working there. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that is interesting now that we're talking about tobacco. So maybe it's good to have some on hand. And you can always trade it in a crisis. So it's never bad. Uh, bad idea I've always some. loved a cigar. Yeah, cigars. Well, you know, they use it in Native American uh, you know, sessions and healing. And it's good for blessing. So what do you think... This is an open question here for everyone. What do you think that this, so if there are other phases to this, and there's certainly enough seeding into the public about it from those that are unraveling this before us, telling us the, the players and what's what with these briefings and everything, uh, what do you see as the phase two here? How do you see that rolling out? What do you see it being? The face of what? Phase two of this oh, whole phase. Thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think this is going to hold because people are getting so annoyed. I mean, like I said, I went downtown today and I saw college kids all hanging out, sunbathing all together. And I don't think they're going to be able to stay in this kind of a contained environment with all these rules and regulations. So it might just kind of get more relaxed. But at the same time, I think there's a nefarious side, like I mentioned earlier, that's designed to take people out and eradicate. So I don't think they can clamp down any harder than they have. Let's put it that way. So whatever they try to do, one thing I will tell you, I'm not wearing a mask full time. So that's, that's going to go. And I don't believe masks help at all. Not at all, in my opinion. Well, there, there's such a thing as the poisoning you get from breathing your own, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. so. not to mention you're concentrating any virus you might have that you would normally shed into Correct. your mask. Yeah. yeah I, I have to, keep taking the mask off so I can breathe. But if someone's coughing, uh, they ought to at least grab a, a tissue or a napkin to catch it and not just cough all over me. I agree. I've always agreed with that. I don't, I, I'm real. I've always been put off by people that just cough into the open air. It's, I think it's rude and, um, it's, it's gross also. So I cough in my shoulder or my, my arm. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just like, most of us were just taught to cover your mouth when you cough or, you know, that's just a standard thing. And, and so, and then in, in Asia, you know, it was, if you go out, if you're sick and you go out in public, you, you do wear a mask and it's mask because of that reason. And so, you know, that's one of the things that, that I think is a friendly thing. Not that I 
would do that. Not that I've done that, but it, it is kind of friendly. If you are sick and you're going to be in public, then, you know, maybe wear a scarf, cover yourself up. I'm, I'm also wondering though, the, with they're easing up for the summer, this for what, for what that's worth, they're easing up for the summer and everyone keeps talking like Dr. Faust and uh, his sidekick and all of that keep mentioning September is when it's going to really be bad. So they've, they've seeded this in and that's what I'm speaking about uh, specifically. So it's like tighten, tighten the, the reins. It's like a Chinese finger trap, not to be funny with the Chinese part, but tighten the reins, loosen it up a bit and then go in tighter. That's, that's what I see happening. Right. Well, calibrating people to this particular psychological operation is, is what you're describing, in my opinion. I, I don't think it's going to be pulled off very well. We're going to probably wind up having some kind of revolution if this continues, because I can tell you, if they decide to let that ease up a little bit, then all of a sudden it's a big crisis again in the fall, right around election time, by the way. I would find that extremely suspicious. And I know that they're planning it. It's like we, we understand very clearly this is an agenda. But at the same time, it's not to be tolerated. So, Oh, you're you know, a conspiracy you, theorist if you gonna, think they're, they're going to be able to traumatize people. I think people are going to get pissed. That's just <laughs> You're a conspiracy theorist for thinking it's going to affect the election. Come on. I don't think there's going to be an election. <laughs> I'm teasing. No election. This totally <laughs> seems geared at destroying everything that that's happened in the last three years. Yep. He, they've pretty much negated every, every move he made. Every good thing he did was wiped out. This, you think that was an accident? Oh, hell no. No. It, no, they did it on purpose, and, and I think that they were trying to make a point. But the problem is, is that all he's going to do is just, is he's not going to fight back? If well, he can't fight these guys on this, that means they win. Aren't there like 5.6 billion unsealed indictments ready to go? I've heard all kinds of stuff. You know what? I, I can't do any of that. And everybody's waiting and waiting for people to get arrested and indicted and this and that. And I'm, har I'm sorry, I haven't seen any of it. So I, I don't know. This doctor... Faustus was involved with Dr. Gallo, who infamously stole other, another researcher's work Shocking. and then salted his Petri dishes to come up with a, an AIDS virus. Do you know that Fauci in Italian means Jaws? Uh -huh. <laughs> Is that for real? Yes. He's yeah. such a little monkey, too. I mean, you look at him, you just want to like push him <laughs> off a cliff somewhere. I'm I'm sorry, but he's pathetic. He looks like a little mouse. He yeah, reminds me of that little jerk you. in Blade Runner, right? Tessa, remember that actor who was over at the Tyrell Corporation? <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, a James Bond villain. Jaws. Well, that's good. I don't. I. I don't know. I. I definitely see something. I definitely see phases to this. And. Uh, but and, and again, I have no credentials here, and I'm just. I get the information I get, and it's for what it's worth. And I talk about it in other places. So I don't want to eat up, eat up the time here. But no. But uh, tell us, Nish. Nish, I'd like your opinion on it. I, I really would. Well. Well. I'll get, I'll get into that later at some point, but I see, I see phases here and I definitely see another phase. I, like I said, with this Chinese finger trap aspect, I see another phase rolling out here in, in soon. I'm not sure when I don't have a time frame, but I hear the seeding of, of September that seems to be getting thrown around a lot from these people that are from the UN to the different countries involved here and it, enough it's being thrown out enough that it's pinging me you know so okay September seems to be significant and then you know you you look at the astrology of September and and how we're moving to fall right and uh, it's a harvest season so there's a there's a lot to chew on with the idea of September and then I'm wondering on what level of this kind of pushing the people the folk all over the world to the point where they're coming out and saying hell no we're not taking this any longer that whole thing if that's not just putting targets on their back the dissidents right right 
What about forced vaccinations? I think that's a possibility, no doubt. And oh, I think yeah. that could trigger people into saying, F you, it's time for a revolution. Anytime I, you try to force somebody to take a toxic concoction of garbage created by some, you know, whatever you want to call him. Well, I know for a, a fact that Everything some of the major corporations are have already told their employees, and I know this for a fact, because uh, I've I am close to people in some and have seen memos and heard about higher level um, uh, conference calls. And there is going to be no choice if they want their job. Right now, there's going to be no choice with heat signatures going in, getting your temperature in from from the lowest level up to the highest level. You you know, you, if your temperature is more than 100.4, you're going to be forced into a quarantine, et cetera, and mass. And then when the vaccine rolls out or something that is supposed to uh, heal you or immunify you, uh, employees are going to have the choice to take that or not lose their job. And this includes people in the household. That's part of the census that is ironically rolling out at this time as well. That at this time of getting a mass database of genetic information. So the corporations, at least here in America, are entities and tied into the corporate corporation of the United States have this plan already and so workers are going to have a choice there's not going to be a gray area with that you 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 get this vaccine or you don't have a job that's in the works it's a real authoritarian way to put a social credit system in place well if that's the case you know they're talking about social credit systems look at china look what they've done oh, yeah. they get they get no they get like null of minus credits i mean the, china itself should be ashamed of themselves as far as what's been going on here but i think you're right niche on that level uh, that could that could trigger an awful lot and also with the census that is not a that's not uh, oh that's a not a coincidence let's put it that way and i've noticed also there was an article about uh, them doing actually going to people's homes and checking to see if they actually have uh, I don't know if it's immunity or not, but definitely looking for taking their blood and such. And and so that's starting to happen in certain states. And I'll tell you, they're not welcome at my house. So I don't know what they have up their sleeve on that level, but they should be very careful about invading people's homes with syringes, trying to get blood samples or anything else. Yeah, I uh, agree. I, A lot of people are that. I feel the same way, Solaris. Yeah, that's I like, no, no. Yeah. I just read or heard a doctor talking about how the, the seria, serology, serology, whatever that test is, the blood serum test is, is inaccurate. Like it doesn't work at all. Like you can't tell if you've got COVID. It doesn't surprise me. They had false positives coming out of the swabs initially. The tests were all jacked up when they first started doing the testing. I know that. Were they and really it, jacked up or were they contaminated with COVID? All kinds of garbage is going on with that. And once again, remember it. I would encourage people, if you don't have a Geiger counter, I would get one and start checking things out in your radius, including yourselves, just a heads up. And if you're running a temperature, get a Geiger counter, just to see. I'm well, and for people that have had, had flu shots in the past, they're going to test positive for this, no matter what, mm -hmm. because it was in the, it's been in the last flu shots. Well, they'll so. probably have the antibody for it. So that's okay. Then they won't have it again. Oh, Right. <laughs> exactly. I still think it's weaponized, though, even if they have it with the last flu shot, because there's something in here that's that's mutating more so than a regular virus. And in my opinion, once again, I'm I'm always checking the atmospheric conditions, and to me, it just seems like a lot of lot of blasting with with radiation. So, in my opinion, I think there's something else happening there. Yeah, it's too but cold. can we, we can't trust the numbers? So, I mean, there could be right. it could be worse, or it could be. I don't think it's worse. I think no, he exaggerated the numbers on purpose so they could get everybody all panicked. And then when they say, oh, look, everybody is dropping, it was never high to begin with, the jackass. <laughs> well, that's what cracks me up. Well, the, plus they were, they were hawking this, this death rate that was based on only the number of cases that they knew about, which is. Right. And let me tell you another thing. They put these people on the ventilators and they probably would have lived had they not put them on ventilators yeah. and had they treated them differently, they probably would have survived. And I, I think once again, those ventilators were a death sentence, and they still are. Oh yeah, there. It's it's like the the 
the absolute opposite of what should be happening according to what I've been understanding with this. And I do want to say, I think, I do think people have died. And I do think that like I, like I said earlier, I, this is a genetic, it's looking for genetic markers, at least his first wave. I think all the waves are. And um, it seems to be targeting specific people that with specific genetic markers but do the numbers add up does does this warrant a world lockdown hell no and that's what you know that's what i think it's got everyone a lot of people on board that would not have been on board before is the numbers aren't adding up no matter which source you look at now because well, all of them are seem to be coming forward saying well i mean even the cdc had to back off right and to that point cdc revised the number of covid you know deaths from covid down to i thought it was 37 the other day 37,000 i'm not sure what it is today but down from 60 to 37,000 and immediately the mainstream media says oh it's fake news and even on snopes if you go to snopes it says it's false S Snopes a, is definitely never on my radar. They are such a joke. I know, but it's it's on the CDC's website that it's. This oh, I know, Jerry. I, I looked. Yeah, yeah. Me too. But I, did you see uh, in our private post the the CDC's part of what's rolling out the second wave now, and they're calling it SARS two or COVID twenty, and um, but they list it specifically as SARS, and it's out there on it's on their um, website, and they're predicting on that now that they say is the second wave it's going to be or going to be a huge amount of bodies dropping and that's why i keep asking about this and it and i only just saw that this week but right, that's but, why i'm saying what's up with this second wave and, this, and it's going to be fueled by the fact that everyone's been locked in their house for two months not getting and then sunshine. they drop something yeah i mean being in your home for an extended period of time just destroys your immune system especially if you're like freaked out and Lysoling your counters every 10 minutes and wearing gloves every, you know what I mean? You need to pick up those germs. That's true. I agree. And also just, you know, keep your immune system strong, take whatever you need to build up the immune system exercise. But yeah, I'm lucky enough to live outside a forest. So I have, you know, that's my backyard. Yeah. Same here. Solaris, helps, you know, and I've always been a believer in, in, we need the germs. So, I mean, hell, I still suck my thumb. So, uh, <laughs> for all you perverts out there. Uh, so, it, it is, it is, that's a definite factor. But, and that's what's making this so interesting to look at and dissect is all of these threads that are going into this tapestry, which is painting a very dire. Uh, picture for us all are you know everything seems really sinister with this and nothing nothing when you strip away the fear is looking positive and the fact that people as always as programmed are willing to give away so much in the name of fear is what's even more alarming that you know the what I have been saying a long time is the 35 year olds up are at, at the biggest risk because it's the ones under this and the, and the ones coming into this, that it's going to be their normal. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That's probably why they're rushing to get it all, all these crazy programs in because then the new kids will be like, Oh, it's always been like that. Wow. Well, it's becoming a very cold world in the illusion of, you know, in my opinion, if it keeps going down this cycle, I'll just be glad when I'm on another world. I mean, this world is definitely not evolved and it could be. Unfortunately, they're not working with consciousness. They're working with everything but consciousness right now. So, so that's part of the uh, control mechanism, I guess. So well, they deny that consciousness exists. What's that? They deny it. Oh, they deny it? Consciousness is just an artifact of your brain. Yeah, right. It isn't real. Wow, I don't believe that, though. I don't either, but that's the uh, prevailing view of our experts. Isn't that wild? 
Well, you know, they can believe whatever they want, but I think they're a byproduct of their belief systems. And, and surely seeing what they're doing on the timeline kind of indicates that they are, they lack consciousness themselves. Perhaps that's their entity control yeah. right there. Yeah. When you oh, got... they're sociopaths. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, well, I mean, you that's... know, they can do whatever they want to do, but not at my expense and suffering. That's my motto. You can do whatever you want, but not as my, not at my expense and suffering. <laughs> and that's where I stay. Yeah, right. that's a, a position of like a Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, consciousness is part of your brain function. Yeah, it oh, is so wrong. An illusion. Right. So I'm looking at the CDC website and the the, re, the COVID-19 deaths from COVID-19, they're saying are 44,000. But if you go to the COVID page, it says that there are 70,000. Like the dedicated number page. So the these things don't jive. These numbers are are too big for people to even fathom. And secondly, perspective wise, I think last year we there were eighty thousand people who died from the flu. So we're we're at half that. Anyway, it, to me, it was from day one a bioweapon. There was no, you know, when that when that narrative started to unfold, it. You know, I was like, yes, this is obviously to me. It seemed that way, and so when they started talking about it in the in those terms, and, and some of the independent contractors were dissecting it and finding the splicing of, you know, the AIDS, and and now they're saying rabies and all this other stuff. Enough stuff is going on here to question all narratives from all these sources and like i i keep saying this is a good thing as far as the public paying attention because it's all this gigantic ball of fuckery where even hardcore people mostly uh that want to hear official sources telling them what is going on in their world and how to act in their world and how to be in their world are saying well this you know the cdc's contradicting you know the the who and the who's contradicting the the UN and, and like all this 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 fuckery it, it it's the contradictions have undone it and then I wonder at what level is that even intentional so at this point I of course I've never trusted anyone that's wanting to rule over me I just was born a rebel and uh, cue the <laughs> I was born a rebel body. Anyway, uh, I I just think that is this part of is this part of it that there is there is is this is this baked in that that there's an idea of wanting people to question to bring forth the dissidents to bring forth the obvious people that are going to protest this and then target them that's what i'm wondering i think that would be part of the psychological operation you know push 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 passive harassment until you either get a reaction or they comply well it's like baiting you know it's like love bombing in a way like get get the ones that are going to be the most difficult to deal with out of the way immediately it's like when new management buys a company right they they or it's this whole side up with say north korea where and who knows what's the truth here who knows i mean i've seen all kinds of craziness already with that but the narrative coming out is kim came out and said he faked his death to see who was wanting to take the throne right this is an old military operation there is nothing new with that so what if that was just done on a global scale with this where this is all like i said earlier just getting all the difficult ones all the dissidents that are going to buck against the system and this reset identified immediately so that they can be taken out right away and that will of course that's going to spark more people to rise up but it's also going to get rid of the those that were definitely frontliners and saying hell no right well but, yeah, i think you're right about that because those who don't support that type of system are changing the reality and their consciousness is changing the reality whether they like it or not so yeah they would be a threat and with that comes extermination if you can't reprogram the target then you have to take them down 
So I wouldn't be surprised at what you're saying at all, but I, I always have this motto saying no free shots, which means, hey, you know, bring it, be ashes, because we'll be ready. And that's where I'm at with them, if that's the case, and they want to roll that way, which I, I, I don't think that's a good way to roll, but, you know, because you're dealing with universal wars, right? And, you know, it gets bigger than what we are here on this world. And I think that Absolutely. they're not factoring that in. Yeah, this to me, and, and that's what I came out saying with my psychic eye um, that I made private, but part of my cosmic salon stuff is this is definitely, a, we've been in war. We've been in a, a, a covert, covert war that we can't see with others that are really us. It's AI and all that. And It's uh, more like a program, though. We've been in a program to hide us it, from the real reality. Right. But it's also, there's, yes, I agree with that, but it's, it's still a war nonetheless. Is if you, if you want to look at it, it doesn't matter how you look at it. I agree. I agree. There's a war in the construct. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. With different factions going on here. And, uh, and now we're being brought into the bigger picture as a collective where it's not and so i don't know where the this is the thing that confuses me where where is the agenda here so is the agenda ultimately to bring us into the bigger picture of what this all is via a construct uh you know are we all walking through the afterlife I and mean, whatever it could be it is it is definitely a revealing of something and and the particulars are what is the interesting stuff to follow here all these ideas of what could be but the fact is we're all participating in this which is at some point and it's on some level creating a deeper narrative that is eating on itself it's feeding on itself and becoming bigger that's well said. I agree. I still watch the skies and pay attention to what's coming in. You know, um, the atmospheric conditions are very significant to me. And that's what I'm watching up here. I'm paying attention to the atmosphere right now. And I'm going to get some technology that can scan a little bit better uh, what's going on, just, just for my own entertainment. So, Iris, I'm with you. I, I've been, my eye has been turned to the atmospheric stuff for a year, you know, like a year ish now, like more specific, you know, more onto it than ever before. And uh, in looking at all the weather warfare we've been going, we're under, and this kind of terraforming situation that's happening, uh, and how that ties into all this stuff. And so there, you know, it's hard, it's not hard if you look, but it's, it's there if people start looking and connecting the dots to the crazy atmospheric stuff that's happening everywhere. And it's not just here. And mm -hmm. that's part of the problem is people get stuck into their, their locale, right? right? Into their little world and don't look outside of their little world and see how all this is occurring. What's blooming, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, that, and that's where a lot of the information you bring forth is fruitful here because this is all tech in a way, right? Oh, definitely technological. And the thing is, it's all weaponized. That way we can, we can count on the weaponization from the military and for anybody who has access to it. So it's going to be PSYOP oriented and weaponized. And in the multiverse, it's not like that. So that's the difference between, that's how you know what's, what's live or Memorex at this point. That's the biggest thing, I think, in trying to navigate what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's part of what, when I keep talking about possession, I'm not coming at possession from a religion. I'm coming at, coming at it from what you just said. What's live or Memorex is a great meme around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you ask me a question on that or no? no I, was, I was just, I think. She was just babbling. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if she was wanting me to answer. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I, I'm basically so, agreeing with you. Okay. And, what about um, the astrological aspects of what's going on? 
I look at the timeline astrology. I'm not looking at what's squared here and what's squared there or mm -hmm. Mars or this or that. And I, I look at multidimensional and also the snapshot of astrology in general is, is only to this perception of reality. So I look outside astrology when it comes down to what's happening here in the timeline. Um, so much of that has been hijacked that we have to look at what's outside the perimeters of what people believe in. But what I will tell you, what keeps coming in very, very strongly is, is all the correlation and all the star maps associated with Orion right now. I think that's very significant. And I think people should dive into that a little bit. Um, notice that there, there's a reason that we have a connection to Orion. And for me, uh, I think that that is something that is pinging back to this world. The, the person I mentioned before, Randy Green, she's, mm -hmm. and this goes along with what you were saying, like they're moving us out of whatever Sagittarius arm. She's also mm -hmm. said that too, that we're being moved into the Orion arm. Well, we, we're definitely moving into another space-time configuration. So mm -hmm. I agree with her on that. And I think that's why I'm looking at the world and the atmosphere doesn't look right to me. The curvature doesn't look right. Everything is weaponized and it's cloaked with chemtrails. They're doing an awful lot to create a distortion in the field. And another thing I've noticed is that the sunlight, which activates our light body and Merkaba and builds our fuels and our cells. I mean, we literally feed off of the Stargate through the sun. There's so much engineering going on. And I think it was even, wasn't it um, Bill Gates that said he wanted to dim the skies again? I mean, they're still trying to dim the skies yes. to, to stop us from absorbing that technology that it's a technology, it's it's part of our light body, it is part of what keeps us multidimensionally in tune to the other other realms and true space time configuration. So I see that as a big deal. Yeah, to I agree, totally. That blocking the sunlight's not good. And that's, you know, the lockdown's also doing that. Yeah, so well, take vitamin D is right. You know, D3 is it? Yep. Take D3. vitamins, uh, especially D3, if you're not getting any sunlight. But, you know, get outside. I, I'd say screw them. Get outside and get some sunlight. Get out and absorb that energy. You know, do what you need to do to take care of your body. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't own your body. And this is another thing. They, they act like they're, they're pushing around cattle and slaves. And, and no, absolutely no. Yep, I get out every day. For like I get out and do whatever the hell I want to do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Except you know? I can't go. All the stores are closed. I was happy to see Hobby well, Lobby I don't open shop. Up. I can shop online if I really need something. But the yeah. idea behind that is nobody's going to stop me from absorbing the energy of the cosmos. That's my birthright. Hell with that. Yeah. I'm a big believer in stabilized oxygen liquid. I have been for years. And through this, when I started to see some very credible people link oxygen as a factor with the COVID-19, uh, it, it, became clear to me to start taking it again. I hadn't taken it in a few years. And uh, and I'm glad I did because it has so many other wonderful benefits. And uh, But I, I do think that it plays into the specific oxygenation of, of our temples, of our bodies. And, and as I said, the oxygen factor here, whether it's 5g related uh electromagnetic related whatever it is is a factor so uh, i've i've been saying you know get you some liquid stabilized liquid oxygen and take it twice a day would those be air drops i'm <laughs> sure <laughs> anyway and it's not and i'm not a doctor so I have no qualifications. No, I agree I'm with you on that. Well, you are a holistic doctor. I mean, I'm a holistic doctor. I, I, we're, we're, I'm beyond medicine women, but you know what I'm saying? We've yeah. studied different areas enough to be um, beyond all that. Medical yes, but I just don't want to, you know how people are. I don't want to get yeah. oh, I know. We're, we're doctors in, in Minecraft. Yeah. We're doctors but you're right, though, about the oxygen. I totally agree. Another thing is, yeah, the radiation does suck the oxygen. It totally uh, takes the oxygen out of your cells. So that would also create some problems right there. And also just having extra oxygen bottles. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys know the hiking, you know, like the hikers where the, they have uh, oh, bottles yes. of oxygen you just bring with you. We have tons of that up here because I live in the mountains. But the idea behind that is, yeah, keep some extra oxygen around, you know, keep things that'll help you in a situation if you need it. it it's ironic, too, because wearing a mask depletes you of oxygen. And so sure. there's a lot of this is so tied in on so many levels with being with oxygen. There's so much uh, of spellcraft around this at, at, a, at a deep level. And I just keep hearing that one thread seems to be really consistent. 
well, whether yeah, it's the lack of or not, it's the oxygen factor. Right. The primary cause, in my opinion, is radiation. So I'm going to, I'm going to double down. <laughs> that's down. why Solaris, I eat uh, seaweed. So, oh, that's I, so good. I love seaweed. I like to get my iodine that way. And seaweed just sucks up all that funk. It, it's very it, good for you. I like oh, seaweed too. It's so good. And the way, you know, the way I've been getting it recently is, well, I got it a long time ago, so it's been in my house, but I, it, our sushi wraps and the non, the, the, just the organic ones, not the ones with the oils and all the salts. It's just the good stuff. And, uh, I eat one of those a day and it's just this one, it's wonderful. I can just feel, you know, you can just feel it. Mm -hmm. It's good for you. Yeah. Good stuff. That'll keep you going. Plus the vitamin C. Yeah. Oh yeah. There I can go on about all the and zinc. All the all the stuff. Right. Chelated zinc and you know, D4. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff to to take. Just don't mix your antioxidants with your oxidants. So you're gonna get a cancel as you, you know, so <laughs> don't take your vitamin C with your oxygen you know your stable oxygen your water they cancel each other out yeah. good advice so we're wrapping on two hours wow this is usually awesome. when yeah, this has been a great we, conversation thanks so much for coming great. on yeah it's wonderful to talk to you on tessa too yeah it's been awesome okay, you want to plug your new book some more sure my book's alien intelligence stepping up to the galactic neighborhood i have it on amazon.com and kindle so pick up your copy if you want a signed copy, you can reach out to me on my website, Night Shadow Anomaly Detectives, and I will mail you a copy for a minimal fee, as long as you cover the shipping and this and that. So, right. Yeah. And I put links to your what your YouTube channel where you do witch files. <clears throat> um, my YouTube channel is Medusa Storm 001. Links in the description. And then your radio shows. Yeah. My radio shows Hyperspace at the KCWR Digital Radio Network. That's Friday, 12 midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific. And then Raven Stars Witching Hour on Saturdays. And that's 12 midnight Eastern time, 9 p.m. Pacific. And of course, Mish and Montana and I join ourselves over there on Cyber Witch Cafe, which is monthly on the Revolution Radio. Yep, it's excellent. So yes, thank you so much, Solaris, yep. for coming My on. My I honor. just love you. And thanks to you Tessa. More than you know, and you too, Jerry. I love you too. <laughs> you take care. And Tessa, wherever you are, thank you for joining us. Yes, much thanks. Much. Thanks, yeah. Tessa. Oh, thank you, pleasure. Tessa. Love it's you all. A, yeah, you are so fantastic. It was Wish a great I could give pleasure. You a hug, all of you. <laughs> Virtual hugs, everyone. Yes. Yeah. What we're we're social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Isn't, right. that, isn't that what the internet is? Anyway, Jerry. All right. All next yours. week we have uh Nox Mente with Patrick Fox. I don't know who this guy is. It's friend of Nish's. Nish oh, was... he's a major player. If you, I'm just gonna say a couple words about Patrick. He is a major art player. He's married to at one point one of my good friends, Terry Toy. We're talking the art scene in New York in the 70s and 80s. He was friends with everyone, and he still is. That's alive, you know. Um, that was part of the art scene then. All common household names, and he's fascinating. He has wonderful stories. And it's going to be uh, a good show and a different show, you know, since we're talking about the art world now. And I'm just glad that he said yes. So it's a great honor to have Patrick on. Great. And then two weeks we're going to have another obelisk, but that's with going to be with Josh Kutchin. So that should be real interesting. Yes, that's going to be great. We're going to bitch Thank about you, Jerry. not getting to go ghost hunting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're all stuck. <laughs> Yep. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening. And be sure to tune in next week and have, stay safe. Yes. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs>